the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, but Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For this wonderful day that you have given to us, Lord, we thank you for this time that we have gathered here to spend with your word. Holy Spirit, you teach us, you guide us, you speak to us. Let it be your word ministered and not our words. Holy Spirit, we want to learn from you. We want to learn about you. We want to know you. Help us, Lord, to live our life only on the word, to live our lives, only operating in the truth, not in our own self. I believe, Lord, that we can live our life giving you all the glory, all the praise and all worship. And I believe that it is your truth, which is what is setting us free completely. I thank you, Abba Father. I praise you and I glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. So, hallelujah. Okay. See, over here, we all believe in Jesus. Correct? Yes, we all believe in Jesus. We all accept Jesus as our Lord, as our God, as our Savior. We all believe in him as our provider. We all, we, we all believe in him as our source. Now, we believe in Jesus, correct? What happens when we believe in Jesus? Today we are going to learn what happened when you and I believed in Jesus. What was the change that took place? What was the transfer that took place? And we can see Paul writing about this in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Praise God. Paul is speaking to us. And he is telling us, okay, and he is uh, revealing to us what happens when we are born again, when we believe in Jesus. Praise God. Okay, now look at this. Verse 13, we'll read. Who will deliver us? Right? Jesus will deliver us. God will deliver us. No. The Bible says this who is talking about God. Okay. Who has delivered us? God will not deliver you. God will not deliver me. God will not deliver any person in this world. Whether they believe or they don't believe. God will not deliver them. According to the Bible, God has delivered us. Because somebody who's saying that God will deliver me, he's saying, in other words, Jesus will come and die for me. That means he's saying, the sacrifice of Jesus is not enough. I need Jesus to come once again. I need Jesus to die once again because his sacrifice was not enough. But that's not how it works. According to the Bible, you see, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. God has delivered us from the power of darkness. Now, what is this power of darkness? The power of darkness was the life that we were living in bondage. See, the life that we are called to live today is free from bondage. If you are still living in that bondage, if you are still living in that prison, you know what that means? That means you are not living the life that God has called you to live. Because the life that God has called us to live is not a life in bondage, but a life in freedom. Not a life in prison. 
prison, but a life in liberty. And the only way we can live this life is when we believe in Jesus. Because, as I told, today we are going to see what happens when you believe in Jesus. This is what Paul is speaking. He is telling us what happened when we believed in Jesus and accepted him as our Lord, as our God, and as our Savior. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Sickness is the power of darkness. Poverty is the power of darkness. God doesn't want us to live in sickness. God doesn't want us to live in poverty. God doesn't want us to live in any any in anything that does not come from God. He does God doesn't want us to be controlled by any spirit that does not come from him. See, deliverance, power of darkness doesn't only have to be physical, it can also be spiritual. When you're operating in fear, that is the power of darkness. When you're operating in pride, when you're operating in anger, when you're operating in strife, that is the power of darkness. See, this deliverance that God has given to us is not only in the physical, but also in the spiritual. He's not only in my body, but he's also in my mind. This deliverance has to take place in every area. But the deliverance can only take place in every area of your life when you are first delivered in the spirit. Because when I believe in Jesus, when I was born again, what changed? What got renewed? What got born again? The spirit. My soul is still the same. My mind, my thinking, my choosing, my feeling, my emotions are still the same. My body is still the same. But now when I accepted Jesus, the change took place in my spirit where now my spirit is no longer controlled by the sin nature, but my spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit. When you go to a shop and you're going to buy something, let's say you're going to buy a packet of chips, okay? Is that packet of chips sealed? Yes. yes. Why is it sealed? So that no germs can come in and, you know, ruin and spoil the chips, correct? It is a protection for those chips. It protects those chips. In the same way, today, as we believe in Jesus, our spirit and God's spirit has become one. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says that. We are one the, with the spirit and our spirit is become one. Now, when my spirit and God's spirit is become one with the Lord, that means my spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit. And now when my spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit, no stain of sin can attack us. Hallelujah. Because where there is the Holy Spirit, there cannot be the evil spirit. Where there is the evil spirit, there cannot be the Holy Spirit. All these years, our spirit was having the sin nature. We were, you know, having the sin nature. And that is the reason why Holy Spirit would not come inside a person. Holy Spirit would only come over a person. But now when we are delivered from the power of darkness and we are translated in the kingdom of his dear son, our spirit is sealed. Now we are no longer having the sinful nature, but we are having the very nature of God. See, what is, we learned what is the power of darkness. Anything that comes from the kingdom of darkness is the power of darkness. Now what is, what what is the kingdom of the dear son? What is that? Okay. Let's go to, to Peter. To Peter. One of my favorite scriptures. Because this is, in this one scripture. Okay, three and four. You see, the way we are supposed to live this Christian life is revealed. Only in two scriptures. The whole 
answer is given to us. And so when people ask us, you know, how do I live the life that God has promised for me? This is the scripture that you have to show them. Praise God. Now see this. According as his, okay, would anyone like to read? According to him. Yes. Yes, Angelica. Okay. According as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life of Godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and with truth, whereby and given unto us ex exceeding great and precious promises, that by thee ye, this ye might be partakers of divine nature, ha having escaped the compute corruption corruption that is the world through lust. Okay, now see this. According as his divine power. See, we can only experience what is in the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of God. When we shift from trying to achieve with my own power to now depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. His divine power. That God has given to me this power. You see, the problem is we are so trained from the beginning to try to get an answer to a problem using our own ability. See, let me tell you. <clears throat> Let's say a person has got a mosquito bite. Okay? And that person keeps on scratching and scratching and scratching and scratching and scratching and doesn't stop. Is it going to be better or is it going to be worse? Worse. worse. It may look like oh, when you're scratching, it may feel, you know, you're get, it's getting better. But is it getting better or is it getting worse? Getting worse. Worse. Getting worse. In the same way, when you are in this world and you're always using your own power, it may look like something is getting better. But is it getting better or is it getting worse? Getting worse. Because, you know why? Because our power is very limited. Our ability is very limited. To go beyond our limitation, we need God's power. We need God's strength. And according to the scripture, this power, this strength has been given unto us. And through this power that has been given unto us, he has also given unto us all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everything that you need to live a fruitful life, everything that you need to live a prosperous life, everything that you need to live a victorious life in the spirit as well as in the physical has been given through his divine power, through his word. But we have to stop looking at ourselves through our own ability and stop becoming self-focused and self-centered. My strength, my power, my ability. But we have to learn how to go beyond using God's power, God's strength, and God's ability. Hallelujah. 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 See that unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. What did he say? According as the divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him. When we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God, we have to stop looking at ourselves through who we are, but we have to begin looking at ourselves through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, we are no longer living a life where we were called to be. We are living a life where he has called us to glory and virtue, but we can only live this life when we depend on his knowledge and receive his divine power. This is the translation. This is what Peter, Paul, sorry, was speaking. 
he said we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god in other words he said we have been translated from using our own power to translate it where we are depending on his divine power and now when i have the knowledge of his divine power and i'm depending on him through that knowledge i can receive his glory and watch i have a question yeah what's the meaning of virtue okay I'll put this in compare so it's easier. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 3 to 4, see this. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to receive the best invitation we ever receive so glory and virtue the virtue is receiving what god has told us we can receive receiving what god is willing to give us praise god, god. this glory and virtue means living the life that he has called us to live no longer living the life that i was living in the past you see what is the problem? The problem is we stop doing what is wrong, but we don't start doing what is right. We stop committing that old sin. We stop the video games. The, we, we did not leave video games. Video games left us. We did not leave alcohol. Alcohol left us, but we don't begin to do what is right. I tell you, when I first encountered Christ, I'll give my own testimony. When I first encountered Christ, I made a decision not to agree with, you know, what I can see, but to agree with only the Bible. I made a decision to believe in Jesus. And the hunger and the thirst had come. So I was studying the word of God, but I could not stop the video games. So I was studying the word of God as well as playing the video game. What was I doing? Studying the word of God as well as playing the video game. Now, when I kept on studying the word of God, now those video games that I was playing, okay, that playing of the video games became less. Praise God, just give me a minute. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as I was saying, when I began to study the word, see the knowledge of the truth is where I come to know practically, intimately, personally. That's what the message translation was saying. Okay. Knowing him intimately, personally, getting to know him. The one who invited us to God. And you might have the question, who's the one who invited us to God? Jesus. Because through Jesus, we were translated. Okay, God has translated us through Jesus from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. See, when I began to get the knowledge of the word and I kept on fitting myself with the word of God, I was still playing the video games, but I used to, I, I, want, I had the desire. See, if you really want to know if a person is born again or not, see if that person has the desire. Does that person really have the hunger? If the person doesn't have the hunger, if the person doesn't have the thirst, that means that person is not born again. Very simple. He's saying he's born again. He's saying he believes in Jesus, but he doesn't really, he's not really born again. Because a real person who's born again will always have the hunger and the thirst to know God, to have an intimate relationship. The Bible says Adam knew Eve through intimacy. It was an intimate relationship between them. And God is saying we can have an intimate relationship with him where we know him. We understand him. And we begin to live our life only for him. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the more I began to study the word and I began to learn the truth and I began to know, you know, God, I began to study and I began to know, just not know about him, but know him in an intimate way, in a personal way. I began to see the desire for the video games decreased and the desire for the word of God increased. 
Now I did not just stop doing what is right, playing the video games, but now I began to start doing what is right. And what is that? Knowing him, knowing him personally, knowing him intimately. And when you really know him personally and intimately, you will always build a relationship with him that nobody will be able to break. And that's why the Bible says the covenant. No man can nullify the covenant. In other words, no man can break the relationship. No man can, you know, break the covenant. No man can stop the covenant. It was because now when we are reunited to our father through Jesus, nothing can stop us from receiving what God has spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you all understanding? Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. What's the meaning of corrupted? What's the meaning of? Corrupted. Corrupted. Okay. Praise God. See, there are two types, you know, there is corruptible seed and there is incorruptible seed. Okay. When you were born from your mother's womb, you were born from the corruptible seed. When you came from, you know, when you were born by the seed of the mother and the father, when you were born from the mother's womb, you were born from the corrupted seed, corruptible seed. But now when we believe in Jesus Christ, okay, when we accept Jesus as our Lord, as our God, as our Savior, today we are no longer born of the corruptible seed, we are born of the incorruptible seed. In other words, we are no longer born from the seed of the mother's womb, but now as we believe in Jesus, we are born from the new, from the father's womb, where now we have accepted Jesus as our Lord, as our God, and as our Savior. Praise God. So now as we believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as our Lord, as our God, and as, and as our Savior, today we are no longer born from the incorruptible seed, where the, the corruptible seed where we were born from our mother's womb. Okay, because when you were born from the mother's womb, you were by default born with the sin nature. Because we were all born from Adam, and because of the disobedience of Adam, many were made sinners, the Bible says. But now, when you made a decision to believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as your Lord, as your God, as your Savior, you are no longer born of the corruptible seed. You are born of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, let's go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. So, let's go back to Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now see this. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, in the power of darkness, when we were under the kingdom of darkness, we were experiencing sickness, disease, poverty, lack. We were operating in curse. But now, when we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God, today, we can receive all that God has given to us to live a prosperous life, to live a fruitful life, what he has given to us through his power, his divine power. So now what God, what Jesus has made available for me on that cross because I'm translated into the kingdom of Jesus, the dear son, kingdom of God, I am no longer walking in that sickness, disease, poverty, curse, lack. But today, God's strength has been given to me so that now when I begin to spend time knowing him, having a relationship with him, I can walk with healing, with deliverance, with blessing, and I can receive 
all that God has given to us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Did you understand? Yes. So now, rather than we living our lives where we are self-centered, where we are self-focused, and when we are walking in the flesh, today as we are translated in the kingdom of his dear son, we are supposed to live our life walking in what God has promised. Living our life operating in the spiritual realm, walking and receiving and believing in what his word has promised for us. And that is why it is so important for us to get an understanding of this because now when you begin to get an understanding of this, you will never live your life in what, you know, in sickness, in disease, in the power of darkness, but you will begin to walk in the, in, in the newness of life where you can receive what God has given to you as a free gift. Hallelujah. And now what God has given to us as a free gift, we can receive it because it is our inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Did you understand? Yes. Write down. When we are translated, Right now, when we are translated, when we are translated from the kingdom of darkness When we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, when we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, From the, in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of light, that is when we can experience that is when we can experience What we have received through his power. Can you repeat again? That is when we can experience what we have received through his power. See, <clears throat> now, when we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, that is when now we can live our life according to his divine power and no longer according to our power. And that's what he saw in 2 Peter 1, 3. He says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. What he has given to us, those all things can be received. And now when I make a decision not to work in the kingdom of darkness, but in the kingdom of light. And now as we believe in Jesus, we have all been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. And that is why Hallelujah. it is so important for us to understand we are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. We are no longer supposed any, and now when we are translated into the kingdom of God, we are not supposed to live in the power of darkness. You know what happens to us is we believe in Jesus, we are brand new in the spirit, but in the flesh, we are still, you know, operating in sickness, disease, poverty, lack in some area. Why? We're not supposed to live our life. The Bible says, according to his divine power, he has given us unto us all things. 
So in other words, the scripture is saying, God has given to us all things. Now as we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, God has given to us all things that we need to live a fruitful life, a prosperous life, a successful life, not a life in sickness, not a life in disease, not a life in poverty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you understand? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there any questions? Okay. Brother, so I, yeah? I was asking one. Uh, when I saw myself uh, to someone else coming to retreat and they are said, uh, like, I was sealed, I was sealed and they go back, repeat their home and they start to repeat uh, their own uh, works. So, is this double-minded? means are you trying to say they come for the retreat, they get healed, but when they go back home, they're still living in the sickness? Yes. Yes. It is because when the person comes to the retreat and gets healed, either it is because that person has only prayed over the person, okay? The preacher has already pray, only prayed and sent the person back. Because that is why it is so important to give the understanding also. That, that is the knowledge that we were learning, right? Personal, intimate knowledge. Only when you have that knowledge, you can receive that all other things that God has given to you. That is why, you know, when you see when somebody would come for healing, it is so important for us to give them the knowledge because now when we give them the knowledge, because Satan is definitely going to come in their life. But now when we give them the knowledge of the word and we explain to them and we make them understand, now, when the seed is planted, Satan cannot come to steal that seed away. Because yes. the Bible says that when the seed was in the pathway, it was because that person did not understand the word. But now when I'm explaining the word through the power of the Holy Spirit, now when that person understands the seed has been planted, now we have to teach that person not to to hold on to that healing because Satan is going to come and attack in another weak area but now because you made that person understand the word, the seed has been sown, Satan will not be successful in his attack and that's why giving the understanding yes we have to pray over them but not only pray, it is preaching, teaching and then healing, Jesus gave the understanding and then he healed I am also supposed to preach teach and then I'm supposed to heal. If there is no preaching and teaching and directly going to healing, then the person did not understand the word. And because that person did not understand the word, when Satan comes, because he did not get the practical working knowledge, he will not be able to apply the word. That's when he continues in that sickness. And that's when the seed has been stolen away. Because Satan comes immediately to steal that word. And because that person did not get a practical working knowledge of the word, Satan was able to steal away that seed without that person even realizing. So why is it why, why is it like that? It is because that we have not yet spent time to explain to that person the word. If we spend time to explain to the person the word, now the person will not be waiting when the preacher will come next. But now when the sickness comes, when Satan comes, he'll use his authority, he'll speak to that spirit, and he'll command that spirit to get out in the name of Jesus. Did you understand? Yes, brother. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. So then we'll continue with the thanksgiving prayer for today's session. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Lord, as your word says that we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I make a prayer for all those people who are here right now. I command if, if there is any spiritual blindness of the truth, I command that will to be opened right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, whoever is going to listen to this teaching in the future, I believe that their spiritual eyes are opened to understand the word. The spiritual eyes are open to listen to the word. And I believe that as they're listening to the word, as they're hearing the word, as they're understanding the word, it is the word that is bringing freedom in their lives. We make a prayer for all those people for their spiritual eyes to be opened in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this session. We believe that you have anointed us. You have blessed us. And I believe that we can always focus on you and know you intimately, personally. And as we are translated into the kingdom of God, receive what you have promised to us. We thank you, above, Father. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. We'll pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.